let's start with domain one. Okay, so first and foremost, we have to understand uh, is the definition of information systems, how we perceive those information systems to be. Now, information systems is your laptop, is your, uh, is your desktop, is your mobile phone, okay, is your servers. So it's everything around you in terms of digital, okay. So those are the information systems. Now, when we look at information system, we are not looking at a hardware only. Okay, we are also looking at the processes around that hardware. For example, your laptop, as simple as that, we have the process of the antivirus updating uh, on, the, on the laptop. There's a maintenance process of the laptop, etc. Similarly, for servers, you have backup, you have release management, you have change management, you have the other processes, patch management, antivirus uh, on the server. You know, all those processes around that server is also part of the information systems. So when we are auditing information system, we are not auditing that hardware. We are also auditing the processes around that hardware. Uh, and why we are auditing is because there is a dependency of the business on that system. Okay, that's the reason we need to have processes around it. So when we talk about information system auditing practices, it encompasses the standards, the principles, the methods, the guidelines, practice, and techniques that an auditor use to plan, execute, assess, and review business or information systems and related processes okay now as i said information systems uh, definition is very important for you to understand you also need to understand there are certain governing mechanisms uh, which has been defined by the industry okay and those governing mechanism basically are the standards okay for example if you see iso 27001 okay which is a standard for information security management system, uh, management system okay and now that standard basically governs that how the information security uh, shall be managed uh, in in an organization similarly there are certain principles similarly there are certain methods there are certain guidelines uh, best practices what we also call it as and uh, techniques uh, which basically the auditor can use to, be, uh, to complete its audit uh, around all the phases of the auditing okay which is plan execute assess and review so as an, as an auditor you must have a thorough understanding of the processes or uh, the auditing processes uh, you should have thorough understanding of the information system processes what I, what I said, like change management, patch management, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, whatever systems you are dealing with, you should have the understanding of those processes around it, around the information system. You should also have the understanding of the business because ultimately the the benefit of that information system is realized by the business. Okay, and it is helping the business to achieve its own objectives. Okay, and also the business wants certain controls to be in place so that you know those objectives are achieved effectively and efficiently uh, so you should be also be having an understanding of the controls now if i take an example here you know for example the information systems uh, we're talking about is a server from that server if you say what are the processes around that information systems uh, for a server backup is important you know making changes to the server new releases Patch management is an important process uh, around that that system. Okay, so you have to understand the the processes around that, and then you have to understand how uh, these processes would also have an effect on the business processes. Okay, for example, that server is supporting an HR function uh, in an organization in terms of payroll. Okay, now uh, if there is a patch release, uh, if there is a patch management or a new patch release, or if there is is less uh, you know if there is change to that server how that will affect my hr uh, payroll system hr payroll management in an organization okay and you have to see okay what control shall i can can i put in place so that it doesn't affect my business okay now if you say change management itself is a process okay processes itself are controls uh, okay but how do i ensure that the process are uh, you know in line uh, with my business objectives okay so as an auditor you are there to check you are, you are there to verify those processes whether those processes you know whether those controls which are in place uh, are are working adequately 
okay and whether those processes you know continue to serve their business objectives any issue with those processes uh, you know how i would i would uh, as an auditor you would try to verify those things uh, through maybe through through sampling you know through various other auditing techniques to to see whether you know the the processes and controls are effectively working so that's what uh, we're trying to uh, trying to see here so whether business processes and control designed to achieve the organization's objectives and protect the organizational assets now upon the completion of this domain as an auditor you should be you able to plan an audit okay now audit as i said is is is, is a kind of a project okay so same project management techniques or the same project uh, management methodology also works for an audit okay so so when you see uh, when you when you say project management you have planning you have conduct you, you have planning the implementation of that project this case the scheduling of that project and then uh, implementation uh, development and then post implementation similarly you have planning the audit conducting which is your implementation you communicate the audit progresses okay you conduct audit follow ups okay and then you evaluate the uh, the management and monitoring of controls in the auditing you also utilize data analytics tools to streamline audit processes you look at that uh, then you will have to provide consulting services and guidance to the organization or to improve the quality and control of the information systems now this is not part of the audit but uh, sometimes when we have an audit called internal audit you know there your uh, your role is something also you know related to consulting where you try to improve the internal internal process but if you go for an external audit uh, you don't do that okay you don't provide consulting services then you also identify opportunities for process improvements in the organization's it policies and practices so these are some of the areas and there would be many more so this is not an exhaustive list so these are some of the areas where you would as an auditor you should be aware of now these are the topics in this domain are divided into two parts uh, uh, one is planning okay and the second one is the execution in the planning part we would study about the audit standard guidelines code of ethics okay that is given by isaka we will understand the various business processes in an organization for example we are aware hr finance you have procurement uh, you have the uh, the physical security or the uh, real estate of the organization manage the administration of the organization okay and you have the ops your operations okay etc etc so we would study about some of the common processes in every organization we will also see the types of controls now what are controls for controls are there to mitigate the risk okay to mitigate the risk to the business objectives then we will also talk about very important principle of risk based audit planning now you must be aware that in an organization the resources are limited in every organization resources are limited okay that's the fundamental principle you need to understand and if you say the process, the resources are limited you have to align those resources to the max to the to an area where there is a maximum risk to an organization okay that's the reason we call it risk based audit planning so as an auditor i am limited i am i am a single person in the whole organization i my focus should be on a core banking or a core application or a core business operations uh, rather than on maybe hr okay so that's the reason we look at the maximum risk area of an organization and start auditing from there okay so that the maximum risks are uh, addressed in an organization so this is basically the risk based audit planning you plan audit based on the risk to the organization so you go for high risk first and then medium and then low okay and this is how the organization uh, works then you have types of audits now there are internal audits external audits second party audit third party audit okay we will see what arrangements we have uh, in the various uh, audits and also what is the difference between an audit and assessment okay so audits are basically done and uh, you know basically audits are done to verify things assessments are also done to verify things but 
due to the uh, different arrangements uh, in an audit and assessment your communication changes okay your job responsibility also changes okay in the execution part we will study about the project management of an audit okay as i'm continuously repeating from the beginning audit is a project right uh, we have to deal it as a project okay and then we will also look at sampling methods okay we would try to look at the audit evidence collection techniques very important uh, because as, as an auditor by principle you should not give any findings unless until you have evidence against it okay then you have data analytics uh, nowadays we are using systems for example banking uh, systems and uh, you know telecommunication systems where you require data analytics te techniques to basically ensure that the system is working uh, effectively okay so we'll, we'll study about that how auditing uh, you know how data analytics helps auditing to give better results then reporting and communication techniques very important in terms again that would also depend on reporting and communication technique would also depend on the arrangement of the audit okay what kind of arrangement it is then we'll talk about quality assurance and improvement of the audit process now a audit also has a quality department so generally all auditing fun functions have already auditing department or quality department in which for example if i give a as an auditor if i give a finding then the quality of that finding would also be you know uh, would be judged okay i would not say judged basically i, I would say that would be assessed okay for example what kind of evidence is it how that evidence has been captured and how uh, you know uh, how effective that evidence is to say that this particular finding can affect the business uh, all that parameters are basically assessed okay many like auditing firms for example ey deloitte pwc uh, all these auditing uh, firms have quality departments which which verify that okay and also external auditors also uh, you know sometimes not they they don't very gravely look into it but they do look into uh, that what kind of finding the auditor gives and because we also have some contentions when we are audited uh, auditor gives a finding we can raise a question that why did you give this finding to me you know we can question them they should be able to answer those questions uh, appropriately to us okay let's start with the first topic which is planning okay so what is an audit uh, so audit is basically as i said verify okay uh, another word for auditing is verifying checking okay so it's a formal examination or testing of information system to determine whether that system is working as per the applicable laws regulations contracts and industry guidelines now these compliances like laws regulations contracts and industry guidelines these are uh, basically depends on again country to country industry to industry okay supplier or a contractor to contractor third party to third party okay and also regulations is basically through regulatory bodies so it also depends on well, you know again regulatory bodies are for industries for example there try for india rbi for bank uh, try for telecom RBA for banking, NPCI for payment gateway, uh, IRDA for insurance. So they also have certain guidelines for the information systems. Uh, so information system has to comply by that guideline or by that regulation, by that uh, regulatory body. Okay. So that is one thing you check. Okay. Then the other thing you check is whether those comply with the governance criteria and relevant policies and procedures. now you also have to see that information should function under uh, under so information system is owned by an organization for example that information systems has to work according to the internal policies internal compliances uh, of an organization okay if you if you for example if you take a server that should also uh, that should work according to the change management process patch management process and uh, you know backup process defined by the organization okay so that is one thing you check you check whether the compliant to the policy uh, compliant to the laws and regulations you check whether it is complying to the internal policies and procedures of the organization third thing you check is whether that that information systems 
is compliant to the CIA, is 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 resilient to the CIA, which is confidentiality, integrity, and availability at appropriate level. Now, what is confidentiality? What is integrity? And what is availability? Confidentiality is basically that the system doesn't allow unauthorized access. Okay, you know the system doesn't allow unauthorized access. Integrity means that the system doesn't allow inadequate modification or unauthorized modification. The system doesn't allow unauthorized modification to data or any other parameters of information systems. The third th thing is availability, which is the systems allows the authorized people to work. For example, you're going on a, you want to uh, create, a, you, you want to raise a ticket, you should be allowed to do that. For example, if you want to go to a, if you are accessing your emails, as email has been a very important operations, you, you should be allowed to uh, your email, okay, because you're authorized to do so, okay. Uh, so that's also an important thing to look at from uh, from information systems perspective. So uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability should be maintained, and the information systems uh, and we apply the controls to reduce the impact to the CIA. Okay, so you should also uh, you know test the CIA parameters of an organ of the system. Then the fourth thing is the efficient and the effective targets are met. Now, efficient is, is, is something which is related to cost, okay? So, uh, IS operations are accomplished efficiently, you know, you, you reduce the cost, okay? And effective means that they are done effectively. For example, you have an antivirus. So, first and foremost, efficient means the cost of the antivirus should, be, should not be too high, you know, according to the organization. Effective means it, it should also, you know, uh, prevent malware attacks to the organization. Uh, system uh, or the information system okay so these are the four parameters uh, you need to look at when you are verifying and checking information systems so first thing is the the compliance to the laws and laws and regulations second is about uh, the governance criteria or the the compliance level to the internal policies and procedures okay the third thing is the cia the impact to the cia and the fourth thing is about efficient and effective, you know, operations of the information systems. So these are the four parameters you check in the audit. Okay.